Katie is an icon. Uh, there's no other way to put it. And she was an icon before she even finished um, her degree at Union. Um, as the first black woman to be ordained in the Presbyterian Church, even me sitting in Illinois, fairly far away from the East Coast, we heard about Katie Cannon. Teaching is my ministry. I love teaching. To empower, to equip, to set people free, to live into uh, the graces and gifts they've been given. To have a theologian who comes and talks about liberation and talks about black people um, as a part of God's common community and family and how we share a kinship with all and how that um, enables us to grow as a community of the faithful and as a community of the world. Uh, that transforms uh, the way theology is done um, historically at Union. So I think that is a significant um, groundbreaking type of um, experience at the seminary that her presence brings, her scholarship brings. When I was in seminary from 71 to 74, black women couldn't even do field education. Where were we going to do it? Well, those of us who were women, I mean, it was so, it was like being an ET. What people weren't hostile, it was just you were an extraterrestrial being. We've never seen one like you. My father and my mother were, were both ruling elders, so they both laid hands on me um, during my ordination. But the president, some of the blacks in the, in the national office were furious that my ordination happened and there was no fanfare, no hullabaloo. It was just, I got up and went back to, to the seminary and had graduation. And, and people say, who preached your ordination service? It's like, it's like I didn't have a service. It was, that, that's what I mean about being an ET. It was the same way when I started teaching white students who had never seen black women in roles of authority, uh, only as mammies and menial workers and helpers and stuff. For me to stand up and say, I'm gonna be the teacher and I'm gonna evaluate your work, to my surprise, I was sometimes the first black teacher that the black students had had. She brought a breath of fresh air, I felt, uh, in the way she engaged everybody in the classroom and she always told us that every voice mattered and she had a a way of making sure that even the shyest person could always participate and it was not an optional thing. You had to be part of the class. I will always be grateful to Dr. Beverly Harrison because she said, um, you can't be a better white man than a white man. You can't be a better white woman than a white woman. You're a black woman, you bring something to the academy we've never had before, and that's what we want. So of course I'd write the paper and I'd put all these dead white men in there, Kierkegaard and Dickinson, and she's like, we got that already. I'd write the next paper I put in, the Niebuhr brothers and Tillich, she said, we got that already. I said, what do you want me to write about? She said, I said, you want me to write about what my mama and my aunts and my grandmama talk about the kitchen table? She said, yes. I said, why is this white woman trying to destroy me? Nobody had ever told me that was gold. No one had ever told me that was the value. She said, that's the contribution you're gonna to make to the Academy. I started writing the oral tradition I'd heard all my life. And she said, that's it. And so that's how the womanist movement got going. The notice came across my desk it was called Union Theological Seminary in the Presbyterian School of Christian Education. It's looking for an African-American with a PhD in Christian ethics who knows something about the black church. And I said, okay, God, you got my attention. And when I stepped off the train at Staple Mill Road, I knew I was coming. They had, I hadn't had an interview with anything, but Howard Thurman, one of my leading formative thinkers, said to me, you don't move until you feel God's fist in the middle of your back. And I felt that nudge when I stepped off the train. It's like, mm, I'm moving to Richmond.
She has also initiated the Center for Women as Leadership, which is a broader conversation that reaches beyond the boundaries of our campus. We had the first inaugural meeting of that this year. Alice Walker, um, who initiated the term, term womanist, who comes to be the keynote speaker, and then the wonderful lecturers and scholars from around the country is a wonderful testimony to the kind of scholarship she's able to do beyond the confines of the campus. She literally, I think, started a branch of theology that didn't exist before she started doing theology. Not many of us are going to be able to say that at the end of our careers. So, uh, and she has mentored a whole nother next generation of theologians to follow in her path. Kate, if you had not called me out, I would not be the teacher I am or the administrator I am. And I suspect also the Christian that I am. And that, um, to me, means that you have had an incredible impact on my life, and I am better for it. Thank you. <laughs>